Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to upgrade your Wi-Fi card in an IBM ThinkPad T42 laptop. And this is part of a larger series on um, doing somewhat of a complete overhaul of this T42, but that will be explained in a later video. For now, let's just flip this guy over. So we're going to have to remove both the keyboard and the palm rest. So if you look down here, it's kind of hard to see with this camera, but there'll be a little symbol for the um, palm rest here. And then up here you'll see one for the keyboard. So anytime you see a symbol like any one of these two, and you'll have to look on your own ThinkPad to see what it looks like, um, remove a screw that looks like that. Okay, so now I have all the necessary screws out. Those included these five screws down here. Now you'll notice on your ThinkPad that you can actually see the numbers on. This, 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 and this are all marked with a one. And this one over here is marked with a two. You can come up here to this little handy dandy guide to tell you what size screws go in which holes. So I also removed here, 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 um, up here, over here, and down here. And those are the necessary screws to remove to get access to the keyboard and the palm rest and what lies underneath. And those also have uh, little numbers that indicate what size screw goes there so you don't get confused when you put it back together. Before you do any work on the inside of the laptop, it is always, 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 always a good idea to take out the battery first. So we're going to just unlock this, and then this one over here just slides, and then you can pull out the battery like that. That way, there's no stray electrical signals on the inside of the board, and your components are a lot safer that way. And it's just good practice to do that, too. So now I have my ThinkPad open, I'm going to go ahead and remove the keyboard first. To do that, I'm going to stick a flathead screwdriver underneath here and pull up and out. Now you can see it's still attached using this cable here. We'll go ahead and disconnect that. You can just pull up and then the keyboard is out of the way. Next we have the palm rest, which is attached here, we'll go ahead and unplug that too, for the trackpad. And all you have to do really is pull up, and that pops off. So now you can see we have access to our Wi-Fi card here. First thing we're going to do is disconnect these antennae up here. These don't take much force to get out, you just pull them a little bit and they'll pop off. And now we have these two little metal wings on either side of the card. And now getting this out one-handed might be difficult, but all you have to do is push out on either side. And actually, that's not even necessary. You can just pull up on the card and it'll pop out like that. So now we have our new card that will just install. First, you have to line up the pins at the bottom of the card with the pins on the uh, mini PCI socket and just push them in firmly and then down and the two wings will lock into place. Next, we'll take our antennae and put them back on. This is harder than it looks. As it turns out, the little uh, round connector that the auxiliary cable this black one goes on was bent. So it took a little bit more effort than I would have liked bending it back into place, but I did get it in there. So now that we have our antenna in place, we're going to put our palm rest back on. So basically we're just going to do the opposite of what we did before. Take our little cable for the trackpad and plug it back in up here. Make sure it's nice and in place and then we just 
align it like it was and make sure it fits nice. Next we're going to reinstall the keyboard. This one's a little trickier as putting the cable back in is not quite the same as it was taking it out. So you kind of have to pull the cable out from underneath then set it down and then reattach it. And now we want to make sure that we install the top part of the keyboard first as this is the more difficult side. So we'll just slide that into place and push down making sure everything on the bottom is secure. Second to last thing we have to do is reattach all of the screws we took out at the beginning. So over here I have my pile and I'm going to going to take the screws one at a time and line them up with these little pictures here. As you can tell, this is a number four screw, so I need to find a number four hole on the back of the case here. And in that case, it's right here. So I'm going to just mark that for now. Then this one, oop, this is a number three, so we need to find a three to put it in. And you just repeat the process until you're done. And of course, the last thing you need to do is put the battery back in. This is even easier than taking it out. Just line up that little slot looking thing with the protrusion in the laptop chassis and push until it clicks and lock it back into place. So let's turn this thing on and see if it works. So I'm here at my Windows desktop and if we go down in the corner we can see we don't have Wi-Fi. And that's actually a good thing because we know the installation went correctly because it can't load the driver for the new adapter. So I'm going to go over here into my control panel to the device manager. And now we can see the Wi-Fi card is successfully recognized, but there's no driver for it. So what we're going to do is update driver, browse for software, let me pick. So I'm here on my Windows desktop, and as we can see in the bottom right corner, we don't have Wi-Fi right now. And that's actually a good thing, since with the we know the old card worked, so the new card could not load a driver. So that at least we know it's recognized. So we can go to the control panel now, go to device manager, and wait. Right, and now we can see our new Wi-Fi adapter has a little yellow exclamation point by it. Let's right-click that and go to Properties. Windows cannot load the driver for this hardware. It might be corrupt or missing. Well, good thing we can solve that. Notice that we have the Qualcomm Atheros Communications driver installed. We actually want to go back to the Microsoft driver because that one actually works. So let's browse for driver software. Let me pick. Instead of selecting the top one, we'll select the bottom one. Now this is the Microsoft driver that is known to work. And just like that, we are done. 
Now, it seems to have forgotten our network, so you can just re-enter your network credentials and try again. So let's do that now. Hook me up is the SSID of our Wi-Fi, and we, you can see we have access to the 5 gigahertz band now. Previously, it was only limited to the 2.4 gigahertz band, but since I installed the new card, we get 5 gigahertz, so I might as well try that. Yes, I'm going to hide the characters. Gosh. Okay, so we are connected. Up oh, there it goes. Okay, so we now have internet on our new card. All right, guys, that's all for this video. I hope you found it informative and enjoyed it somewhat. I have more repair slash upgrade videos coming for this ThinkPad, so make sure you're subscribed for those. And I'll have more um, tutorials in the future. Uh, leave a like if you're so inclined. Leave me a comment if you have a question or some feedback for me. And I'll see you in the next video.